Hello and welcome everyone to VMware basic networking tutorial. We're going to talk about VLAN and private VLAN. So in the last section, we were discussing about distributed switch and also about port binding. So this is our third session. And in this, we're going to discuss about VLAN, trunk and private VLAN. So these topics are very important when it comes to VMware networking. Uh, the understanding of VLAN, trunk and private VLAN in VMware uh, is very, very important as you have multiple virtual machines running from a single host and at the same time accessing multiple network connections. Let's begin with VLAN. VLAN become more important as the network complexity has exceeded the capacity of a typical local area network. So in a typical local area network, uh, if you want to isolate or segment the traffic, then you need multiple switches. With VLAN, you can separate logically into different segments and that brings better administration, security and uh, management of traffic. So with this VLAN segmentation, for example, a device connected to a particular VLAN a broadcast a packet, it reaches only to the device connected to that same VLAN but not outside it. So this simplifies many of the potential complications caused by uh, LANs including excessive network traffic and collisions. So a VLAN acts as a single LAN, it makes up a segment and that means that is a broadcast domain of uh, that v that segment is a broadcast domain of that VLAN. So VLANs are identified by a VLAN ID that is a number between 0 to 4095. The default VLAN ID on any network is VLAN 1. So for example, on a switch a traffic that is sent to a port that is a member of a, a VLAN 100, that's going to be uh, forwarded to any other port. Uh, it belongs to VLAN 100, not to uh, any other port that belongs to any other VLAN uh, except a, a trunk port because a trunk port can uh, be tagged with multiple VLAN. So if VLAN 100 is tagged to trunk port, then this packet is going to travel through trunk port also. So this effectively allows a network administrator to logically split up a switch and allowing a multiple broadcast domain to coexist on the same hardware. Uh, uh, at the same time, they can maintain the isolation, security and performance benefits. So without a VLAN, you need multiple switches to maintain uh, this isolation, uh, security and performance benefits. But with a VLAN, you are able to do all this in, in the same physical switch and also you are able to uh, logically group the network into uh, different segments uh, regardless of the uh, physical uh, device or its location. And the important point of VLAN are a layer to protocol. So if a device in VLAN 100 want to talk to another device uh, which is in VLAN 200, then a layer 3 routing is required to allow communication between VLANs. So either it need to be a layer 3 switch or it should be a, a connected to a router to, uh, to route the traffic between these two different VLANs. Uh, before we go to VLAN tagging, I think it's good to understand uh, uh, untagged or native VLAN. So any traffic that is sent from uh, a host uh, like your computer, your laptop or the IP cameras to a switch port that doesn't have any uh, VLAN ID specified in that uh, uh, data packet. So that will be considered as an untagged VLAN. So for example, you have a port configured as a VLAN hunter and your computer connected to uh, that VLAN. So any uh, traffic or any packet that's going to go from your computer to that uh, port is untagged uh, VLAN packet. So this option typically used when connecting like workstation or IP cameras. They don't tag their own traffic. So a port can only have one untagged VLAN configured at a time. So VLAN tagging. VLANs are identified by a VLAN ID, which is a number between a 0 and 4095. And when you look at the Ethernet data frame, it's a 4 bytes uh, header. So a data packet starts from a devices or a workstation and flow through the connected switches and routers and reach to the end devices. So VLAN ID tag uh, may be added to this or removed to this data packet by a host or a router or a switch. 
So it is important to understand who going to tag VLAN ID to packet uh, uh, when it comes to VMware networking. So we're going to go a bit deep into VLAN tagging from, uh, from a VMware perspective. So there are three places where a data frame can be tagged with a VLAN ID. Physical switch, virtual switch or guest operating system. Physical switch, if you don't have a trunk configured on the switch ports connected to the vSphere host, then VLAN tagging gonna happen at the physical switch. Virtual switch comes uh, when you have trunks configured on the switch port, then VLAN tagging gonna happen at the vSphere host. Guest operating system is, is very rare. Normally firewall appliance is gonna do this. Uh, so I don't think uh, we need to discuss it here. Look at the picture here. You can see VLAN tagging on a physical switch. So the port is set to access mode. You can you know that a port can be set in an access mode or a trunk mode. So here the uh, port is set to access mode. So tags are added and removed as the frames enters and leave the port here. So any frame uh, close at the switch board uh, doesn't have any uh, VLAN tag on it. So when you have a trunk configuration on the switch board, then uh, tags are just inspected so so for example uh, if the trunk configured for vlan 100 and 200 then the switch port gonna inspect those tags if it is 100 or 200 then the port allow those frames to enter so the frame crossing uh, this connection this switch port have vlan tags because at the switch port it is just inspected only the frames just inspected then after that the frame closing still with a, a VLAN tags. So port groups in your virtual switch are set to tag uh, the, the, the frames that leave the virtual switch. So guest OS, as I said, this is very rare. So switch port uh, is set to trunk mode. Uh, so as I said, in a trunk mode, the switch port just inspect those frames and the frames close uh, after the switch, the frames closing with uh, VLAN tags then uh, the driver inside the guest operating system handles uh, the tagging in this case. Now let us move to our topic private VLAN. The best point to say about private VLAN is it provides segmentation of devices that are on the same broadcast domain. It means you can further segment your VLAN. So you segment your physical network by VLAN and pvlan offer or private vlan offer further segmentation to your vlan dmz is most a use case of private vlan so private vlan use the concept of primary vlan and secondary vlan primary vlan is your main vlan for the network then secondary vlan provides the segmentation so if you have a VLAN 100, then that is your primary VLAN. Then secondary VLAN can be three of these, promiscuous or isolated or community VLAN. In a promiscuous model, device on this VLAN, which means the primary VLAN, then you assign secondary VLAN as promiscuous VLAN. So this device can communicate with uh, isolated VLANs and multiple community VLANs. So this is uh, normally we can say this is a primary VLAN. The second one is isolated VLAN. So devices in the isolated VLAN can only communicate with those on the promiscuous VLAN, but not other devices on the same isolated VLAN. For example, a kiosk, which doesn't need to communicate each other, but at the same time, it need to talk to the server. So the promiscuous uh, model is mostly adaptable for firewall network and isolated gonna uh, recommend it for kiosk. Then the final one, community VLAN. So these devices can communicate to those on the promiscuous VLAN as well as those in the same community VLAN. So you can group uh, with the community VLAN, for example, and uh, you can create a community VLAN for some gaming uh, uh, PC or something like that. Then this community VLAN going to be uh, talk each other and at the same time it can talk to promiscuous VLAN also. 
So these are the three uh, segmentation options that is available with the private VLAN in VMware vSphere distributed networking. We're going to start our demonstration for that log into VMware vCenter then go to networking then I have already a port group created. If you want to create a new port group you can create it from here new port group then uh, when you configure the settings you will come to this place where you can configure VLAN, VLAN trunking and uh, private VLAN. Port binding, port allocation and other things we discussed in the previous video so the scope of this video is to cover this portion. So I'm gonna work on the existing port group that is uh, go and right click then go to edit settings then at this VLAN you will see how to, to configure this. So if you want to create a VLAN uh, or give a VLAN uh, for a particular port group, then here you can do that for example. So this means uh, you give 100. So this port group is uh, accept only the traffic uh, with VLAN ID 100. So as we explained that any uh, traffic that comes to uh, this port group uh, will be uh, uh, inspected and make sure that the VLAN ID 100 uh, tag data frames uh, are allowed to pass in and also any packets going out is going to be tagged with VLAN ID 100. Then the second one is VLAN trunking where you can put a, a range of numbers here that is like uh, 100, 200, 400 something like that. So that is the other option. Then there is a private VLAN that is what we discussed in the in the, in the final part. So we need to configure a private VLAN in this switch. It is not configured yet. So in order to configure private VLAN, go to the switch, D switch, because you configure private VLAN at switch level. Then go to settings. Then you have an option here to edit private VLAN. So here, uh, as we said that the Prometheus VLAN ID and private VLAN ID are same. So for example, I give 100, this Prometheus VLAN ID is also 100. Then I can create uh, an isolated one and this is the isolated uh, uh, VLAN ID. Then I can create community that is uh, 102. So the Prometheus one can talk to one isolated and uh, all the community VLANs and also it can talk outside because it is same VLAN. And also this isolated can talk only to this uh, outside uh, Prometheus uh, VLAN ID only and the community uh, and the community can talk all the machines inside with that community VLAN ID. So this is how it works. You can click OK here and then there are some errors with that uh, VLAN numbers. We will just change it. Now the, the configuration of uh, private VLAN has completed. Now you can go to the distributed uh, port group then from there go to edit settings then at the VLAN you can assign private VLAN and from here you can choose your secondary VLAN. So this is how to configure a uh, private VLAN in VMware vSphere distributed switch. Thank you for watching this video. Bye for now.